got some breaking news just a reminder for all of our viewers that rishi sunak the british prime minister as you know of indian origin will be landing in delhi shortly at the palam technical airport which is governed by the indian air force he will be arriving very very shortly prime minister sunak has just posted i'm heading to the g20 summit with a clear focus stabilizing the global economy building international relationships supporting the most vulnerable this action is part of that putin again has failed to show up for the g20 but we will show up with support for ukraine so a very very telling comment there from the british prime minister gorav i want to draw you in on this uh, 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 the prime minister sunak is going to be landing very very shortly he says putin hasn't shown up but that ukraine is definitely going to be on the table and let's remind our viewers gorav that india's stand on ukraine has been vindicated validated endorsed by virtually everyone the naysayers from last year have egg on their face they're looking stupid and this morning i'm glad to see that former prime minister manmohan singh has also endorsed india's foreign policy when it has come to the russia ukraine issue gorav Shivir, absolutely right. You'd recall uh, external affairs minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar had actually. told the world that europe can no longer think that europe's problems are the world's problems or the world's problems are not europe's problems prime minister narendra modi had also made it very clear in fact in in his conversations with the russian president vladimir putin that this is not an era for, for war india has been talking about peace negotiations and dialogue that's been india's considered and consistent stand gradually the world will come around it because dialogue is the only way forward peace is the only way forward at the same time you cannot let and that's again a point that india has been making you cannot let the russia ukraine conflict hijack every other issue and not talk about the problems that the global south or the developing world is facing especially at a very crucial time you're recovering from covid 20 uh, uh, problems you the economies are just about to recover the world is in crisis uh, uh, again you had this uh, russia ukraine conflict that's impacting the entire world how is it that you work around this to bring the developing countries forward india's proposal bringing the african union on board uh, g20 as a permanent member again that's something that's going to happen right in this building behind me the mandapam bharat mandapam behind me that is a genuine step that goes a long way in bringing in taking africa along the entire african uh, you know union along to ensure that the benefits of of economy or economic progress uh, are 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 shared by everyone if debt is a huge crisis in developing countries what yes. debt restructuring uh, can can the banks do to ensure that developing countries benefit again shift the digital digital platform that we are talking about you and i have experienced it our country has experienced it remember there were naysayers in our own country saying which which vegetable vendor will be able to charge his mobile phone or take money through yeah, paytm or take money through yeah. upi or the bhim app india has actually done it and shown the world shiv incredible i mean uh, you're absolutely right every one of those things that you've mentioned uh, you know has vindicated and validated india and this is not about any kind of chest thumping or uh, you know nationalism these are concrete examples of decisions that india has taken that have stood the test of negativity and criticism and become the admiration of the world whether it is dpi whether it is digital payments infrastructure whether it is upi whether it is uh, you know much of the other uh, many of the other things that have actually been done that are now going to be adopted by other countries india stand on ukraine these are real issues and the british prime minister when he lands remember he said that uh uk's interests are going to be of prime importance when they talk trade with india why would the british prime minister say anything else obviously he is going to uh, be speaking from a point of british interest but remember that polomi gorov our entire team at the bharat mandapam are not only going to be reporting every single news break uh from the G20 talks the bilaterals the outcomes and the news breaks but also the amazing sidelights the body language the 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 tone and tenor of the relationships that are going to be forged uh during this G20 summit and remember the british prime minister when he lands all those meetings are going to happen he's also going to be visiting the akshardham temple polomi we understand uh, and humayun's tomb perhaps as well 
All of the leaders have certain things that they're going to be doing apart from the G20 summit itself. We do know that the British Prime Minister's uh, you know, Indian roots and his religiosity has been a talking point in the media quite extensively, both in the UK as well as here in India. As the son-in-law of Narayan Murthy and Sudha Murthy, uh, I think he's going to make some headlines when he arrives. Polumi. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, the family uh, is uh, waiting with bated breath. In fact, uh, uh, you know, there's a full Punjabi uh, celebration uh, which has been uh, put together by the family uh, which uh, resides over here and has come from other parts of uh, the country as well in order to welcome uh, Rishi Sadak. And yes, he might have, like other dignitaries, might have uh, some programs on the side as well um, as they, of course, uh, spend these uh, couple of days in uh, New Delhi. They might, uh, Rishi Sadak could quite possibly visit the Akshar Dham a temple as well. But just a small update, uh, Shiv, uh, if we can just uh, pull that up uh, for our viewers right now. Uh, the Prime Minister has uh, just updated his uh, cover photo on uh, the social media site X and it is a photo of uh, the Bharat Mandapam with the Nataraj statue at front lit up very beautifully in all the beautiful colours uh, that we've seen it uh, after sundown. So that is now the Prime Minister's cover photo. So uh, you know, India pulling out all stops uh, now to welcome uh, our foreign guests uh, for the G20 Summit 2023. Well, let me stay with me. Very, very interested in that because remember that at international summits of this kind, it's not just what's being said across the table. It's what's being said off camera in one-on-ones, the body language, the relationships and friendships that will go down a long way, trickle down to the officials and the contingents and really make relationships between all of these countries that much stronger. And India is at the head of the table. That makes a huge difference. Now, let's tell you a little bit more. The top heads of state from across the world are set to converge. They've already started to arrive in the national capital. U.S. President Joe Biden is in the air right now. He's departed for Delhi uh, from the Ramstein Air Base in Germany to will be attending, will be landing at the VIP terminal, the Palam technical area just very shortly. Prime Minister Modi and the US President, their bilateral talks will be taking place tonight soon after the latter arrives in Delhi. He's expected to la land at about 7 p.m. Progress on the deal to jointly manufacture jet engines in India, the purchase of a $3.1 billion deal for MQ-9B armed drones, civil nuclear energy technology, trade, climate, all of those are going to be topping the agenda for the Prime Minister and the President. Remember, both Prime Minister Modi and President Biden are heading into crucial elections for both in addition to, uh, to what I've just said, sources suggest that the Prime Minister will be holding bilateral meetings with leaders of the UK, Prime Minister Sunak, Japan, Germany and Italy. On the 10th of September, the Prime Minister will hold, hold a working lunch meeting with President Emmanuel Macron of France. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is scheduled to arrive, like I told you, very shortly. He will be received by Minister of State for Consumer Affairs, Ashwini Kumar Chaube. Meanwhile, several leaders and delegates, including President of Argentina, Italian Prime Minister Meloni, the Nigerian President, Mauritian Prime Minister, the IMF's Managing Director and the EU Commission President have already arrived in India. One thing I would note, because I got the question a couple of times in the press briefing room about China and you know, the fact that Xi Jinping is not coming, whether they would play spoiler and so forth. I'm not going to handicap what will happen at this summit in that regard, but I would point out that if you look at the hosts of the G20 over the next few years, we have India this year, Brazil next year, South Africa the following year, and then the United States. And I think along with those three country, countries, India, Brazil, and South Africa, the U.S., has a deep stake in stewarding the G20 and making sure that it remains a central mechanism for global coordination on all the major challenges we face. And I think over the course of the weekend, you'll see opportunities for us to reflect that. Uh, the other thing I would say is that tomorrow, the president will be meeting with Prime Minister Modi. It will be an opportunity to follow up on Prime Minister Modi's visit to the United States. And we will see meaningful progress on a number of issues, including the GE jet engine issue, the MQ-9 Reapers, 
on 5G, 6G, on uh, collaboration on critical and emerging technologies, and progress also in the civil nuclear area as well. So we will mark all of that progress when the two of them meet tomorrow, which shows the breadth of the relationship between our countries. Of course, President Biden will also speak on uh, critical fundamental values that the United States stands for, as he does in all of his engagements. Continuing to advance the U.S.-India relationship will be a priority this week. We highly value our bilateral relationship with India. In fact, this is my fourth time in India over the last year, making it the country I visited most frequently as Treasury Secretary. We also welcome Prime Minister Modi to the U.S. in June. The U.S. is home to the largest Indian diaspora outside of Asia and is India's largest export market. Expanding our bilateral economic ties and our cooperation on global challenges is crucially important to us. I don't think that this G20 will resolve in two days all the problems of the world and all the challenges of the world but I think it can be a bold step in the right direction, and we should work to make it happen and to support the Indian presidency. And this is how the EU is considering its role uh, in the multilateral uh, uh, approach uh, point one.